Okay, welcome everybody. This is our inaugural critique session. We're going to see how it goes today. I'm excited to jump into this. Um, if you would like to have your piece critiqued, you can send it to feedback at brandondayton.com. Make sure to include your name um, in the image file. And just so you're aware, I'm not going to be able to get to every image. It's actually a small minority I'm actually going to be able to, to look at and critique. So just understand that if I'm not able to get to yours. No expectation I'm going to be able to actually look at it. But anyway, let's get started on this image. This is an image submitted by uh, Emily McLaughlin. Thanks so much for submitting this and making it available for us to look at and to um, critique. So um, I'm really kind of interested to dive in here and, and look at several different things. I've got a couple different notes on here that hopefully are going to be useful and helpful, um, you know, on any it further iterations of this, or you know, hopefully on any future work that you do. So um, as I'm looking at this piece, this is kind of a fun piece because compositionally, not only do you have this story happening, but you have kind of this framing device as well. Um, and so we're gonna talk about kind of this frame you have uh, set up. We're gonna talk about the composition, and, and then we'll talk about uh, in, in more detail about some other things. So let's first talk about composition. So, uh, you know, I highly recommend you go back and check my video on a simple approach to composition, and that will give you some insight into some of the principles I'm talking about. But every composition is basically like a, a sentence. You can break it down into a very simple s sentence. And, you know, I don't know the specific details of the story that, that this is telling, so I'm just going to kind of uh, build something based on what I see. But, you know, a man and his horse run into a fox in the forest. So it's really about this encounter, this moment, moment of kind of recognizing one another. That's kind of how I perceive it. So we have kind of three parts to this story. We've got the man and his horse, which I'm all, almost going to kind of treat as one part. We've got the fox, and then we've got the forest. So these are our, our three compositional elements um, we're going to be dealing with here. And those are going to be the three elements that need to stand out the most. And with all compositions, I'm going to kind of simplify how we're going to think about this. With all compositions, this is the man and his horse, this blob here. This is the fox. Those are our two most important uh, parts of the story, um, With I would say with kind of equal focus. And the forest is, is less important. I'm going to say that's kind of like this is our first, first priority. That's kind of the top of the hierarchy. The forest, we got our trees over here. This is kind of second of second importance. So we want to make sure that um, these two figures here, the fox and the man and his horse, those are the things that stand out the most in this composition. And there's a couple things we can do to help accomplish that. Um, so a couple of things that I want to point out in, in the current version of this image uh, and how we could, would, could kind of strengthen things by modifying them a little bit. So first of all, uh, we want to look at the issue of value. Like right now, when you look at this image, the heaviest value I see is in this fox's ears, the tree, the shadow of the tree, and then in the legs, of course, kind of this area here. And that means those are the areas where, that are really gaining the most focus. So what we want to think about, how can we kind of rearrange um, value and placement of things so that it's the man and the horse, and it's the fox that kind of stand out more than this kind of ring ring of trees. That that doesn't mean necessarily that we don't want to make the trees dark. We, we could take a strategy where we make the trees dark, but that's going to change how we um, how we treat uh, the man and the horse. So let me, let me do like a white overlay here. That's red. White. There we go. Kind of do a little bit of transparency here. Let's look at some options about how we could arrange this um, setting. You know, let me do it in the kind of this, a similar sepia here so that the, the other figures stand out a little bit more. So first of all, one thing we can kind of try and do, let's try and uh, we kind of want to think about planes. I'm trying to think about planes to think about what's our, what our foreground, what our midground, and what our background is going to be. And 
because of the style we have here, we have kind of this style that's this kind of like pre-Raphaelite, you know, I don't know if it's kind of like turn of the century type style. It's very graphic. Um, and so we want it to have kind of a flat graphic look to it. That feels like the right match and style. And right now there's kind of this suggestion with, with these trees of some sort of like um, uh, perspective. And um, I'm, I want to try to kind of do a version of this where we keep things very um, kind of flattened perspective wise. So we can have these kind of trees. background. We'll do this other one over here. So and we've got this frame going on too, so we can we can build off the frame. But what we're, what it, my kind of concept here is that we're gonna we're gonna kind of create a frame within a frame. So we've got the literal frame, then we've got these trees that we're also gonna treat as a frame. Now, I'm wondering if we want to indicate some sort of foreground area here. So I'm thinking we have some sort of foreground area that the fox is going to be on. Then we're going to have kind of a secondary plane back here that uh, the man and the horse are going to be on. Um, and then right now there's kind of this indication of this landscape here. And by the way it's set up, it almost makes it feel like it's going up a mountain, which I don't know if that was totally intended. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna kind of indicate the landscape in this way, that, that there's actually, there's all this landscape going back here, but we don't need to see so much of the landscape to indicate that, it, that it's there. All right, so now let's figure out where we want to place this fox and where we're going to place our other figure. So let's see here. Now, and with what we're doing here now, I think I'm going to make the, the fox a little bit smaller. But I'm, I'm going to give him kind of the same pose. This fox is going to have, still have kind of the same similar pose kind of mid-look while he's walking through. Uh, and I'm going to kind of continue this idea that he's this fox. I don't know if it's girl or boy. We're going to give the sense that this fox is kind of in the act of kind of trotting through the forest and then kind of turns its head around to see the man and the horse. So um, this is kind of, we get into to storytelling, kind of with, with the subtleties of the pose, we can kind of indicate um, what's going on, you know, that this fox is kind of, we want to capture this moment of, of when they kind of recognize one another. And um, because we're trying to create a sense of scale, we're going to push the, the man and his horse a little bit further back. And I want to, I want to do something with the storytelling with the man and the horse the same way that I'm doing it with the, the fox. So the idea is that the man and his horse, I want to give the sense that they're kind of moving in this direction and that they kind of, this man's almost turning his head around this way to, to see the, the fox. And we can indicate that also by the horse. You know, maybe the horse, he's still kind of just keeping his head faced forward. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so sexist with these animals. I keep saying he for the animals. My apologies, they could be. Horse anatomy, yay, all right. So that's the basic layout. Let me let me kind of decrease the opacity on this on this other image here. 
now that I've done this, I'm looking at what we've done with the trees, and I just want to, like I said, we have this kind of sentence we want to we want to tell with composition. We want to tell this story of, you know, a fox and a man and his horse seeing each other within a forest. I want to make sure the man and the fox part, the man and the horse and the and the fox are, are really clear. So what I'm doing here is I'm moving this tree to the side because I really want a clear silhouette on this horse. I mean, maybe his, his, his tail can go beyond a little bit, but I want, it, I want their forms to be very clear within this um, composition. I'm gonna merge these down. I'm gonna maybe even, even scoot these guys over a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So now it's a question of what do we want to do with value? And, and what we do with value here can make a big difference on how, um, how we kind of can, can pick, up, pick up these details. So I'm going to try something with value here. What I want to do, we're going to keep this as simple as possible. So, you know, on your first pass of value, don't try to be too complex and have all sorts of subtle variations. When we're conceptualizing it, let's conceptualize it as simply as possible. So I'm going to take one value. Hold on here. Let me just. All right. Um, I just want our, all of our foreground to be this value. And I'm even going to make our fox this value, too. And you know, as you are doing. Uh, your pieces, I, I think if I'm aware, this is a traditional media, this is like a watercolor. A lot of artists, what they will do is they will just do a little sketch to the side before they do their, their full piece, where they kind of figure out what they're going to do with value and with color. So even though I'm doing this digitally, you can totally do this traditionally as well, where you go in and kind of just figure out what the, the value is going to be on a side with a little little piece of paper. And I think I actually want this foreground value to be a little bit darker. So let me just, there we go. I like that. So look, the, the fox and the, and the forest are essentially, they're essentially really the same value. If you squint, and one way you can really judge this, it's, it's a, like squinting is super, super helpful. When you squint down, you see how this, this shape of, of the forest and the fox, that, that, that really pops out. And that's what you want to try to retain. So just to kind of contrast that with the original, you can see how this fox, his tail overlaps this tree here. His head overlaps this other tree here. And so it's the silhouette of the fox is not quite as strong. By doing this, that fox is a very strong silhouette. And we can see that pose. We can see his action. We understand what he's doing. So now I'm going to take the this foreground character of the the horse the man and just line art right now but I'm just gonna copy and paste it back here I'm just gonna we can make a little more diffuse so they're just they're farther away and this this is one thing you can do to kind of if something is standing out too loudly if something you want to feel like it you want to push it back into the distance a little bit you can just make make it not so light. Um, but up against the white of the background, this, this is still gonna, gonna stand out. So we're gonna give this a little fill too. But it's gonna be a lighter fill. Maybe we're even, even gonna go lighter with that. Oh, yeah, I think we wanna go lighter with that. Something like right there. Maybe these lines we can go a little lighter with too. And this is, you know, up to your judgment. You want it, I'm squinting as I'm doing this because I'm trying to, I want something that's, that's not going to compete with the fat, the fox, but still going to be, be telling its story. It's still going to be popping out a little bit. Um, so let's say something like that. So now we've established uh, the narrative. This is the narrative of this composition is all here. It's, it's pretty clear. We've got kind of the three parts of it. They all have really strong silhouettes, and we can kind of see their relationships. Um, you can add a little bit more value now as you go. 
I might come in and just add a little bit of spots here and there to, to separate. That's, you know, the man show indicate just kind of some shadows and things like that. And let's indicate um, just some foreground detail. Oops. I have to do that in the back. I'm just going to indicate some some sort of detail. We're going to have some sort of like, you know, plants or something here. All right. Um, one thing I want to kind of kind of modify the top of the ground here is is hitting the fox's head. So. Go into the fox's head here. Let's just move it up a little bit so it's not, not it's sitting right on that line. The proportions actually look better there. Okay. I'm going to come back in. I want to indicate a little bit more background here. I think we have, I think we have space to indicate some more background here. And this is important to note that you can suggest a lot with very little. I'm just going to want to, I want to outline this with just red so you can kind of see. Like, see this little strip here? Look at what a small percentage of this image it is. But that little small strip can, can really indicate a lot of depth. And I've got these other, you know, these other pieces as well here, kind of creating these different layers of, of foreground to background. We've got this foreground here with the fox and the trees. Then we've got this mid-ground with the man and his horse. And then we've got the background. And each of those little pieces helps to indicate the depth. Let me just kind of zoom out to see how that see how that's looking. Um, and you know, we can add some sort of detail in this area. I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing even that this area has some negative space. There's a little bit we could do to um, to fill that negative space without mucking with it too much. Um, I mean, we could even add in, indicate some some more trees back here. Um, we can also come into the foreground if we want to have something coming through here. That all right. So there, that's I like that. That's kind of a fun concept. Um, and you know, there, there's other options we can do here as well. Um, just looking at this, and this is the thing: is as you're doing these compositions, you can really kind of explore different things. There's not one right answer. Uh, of course, you could you could do something that sticks closer to your original composition. Um, that's that's up to you. Just you kind of want to use the same principles. I mean, the other idea you could have is is um, we talked about silhouette, but as long as you kind of cover these guys up a little bit more by this tree, that feels like even that could kind of work. But I don't know. I don't know. I think I like this better in in, in this case. All right, so that gets us to a little bit to. Um, Talked about composition, a little bit about silhouette, uh, and kind of funny, finding some ways to, to fill these spaces. Um, the other thing I want to kind of talk about is is let's let's talk a little bit about detail. Um, this type of look, this is is very uh, works really well with detail. So I'm gonna, just going to flatten these. And let's look at the original again. The original has has some detail in some some interesting places. We have these kind of knots here. We got some plants and some some trees. With this type of aesthetic, it really pays to take time and do some really really pretty um, detailing. So, for example, we can come back to this version. 
if I were to take this a step further, I might go into this overhang. And even though I'm keeping the silhouette as, as it is, I, I'm gonna keep, I'll keep the value basically the same. I don't need to change the value. But I really wanna just come in here and make this really beautiful. So this is just, this is just a quick sketch. But think about what you could do in terms of like having these beautiful little branches. You know, of course, look at reference for stuff like this. Shape of the leaves. You know, what, what type of tree is this? What's, what, what sort of aesthetic do you want on this tree? Um, Uh, it almost makes you think of like, you know, the Winnie the Pooh backgrounds. They have these beautiful little, like a Winnie the Pooh, the Disney animated Winnie the Pooh. And they just have these beautiful little like trees and things in the background that have these little twisting bits and pieces. So this is really uh, a great opportunity to, to get in and learn how to apply some of those, those beautiful little details. You know, really take your time on those. I'm, I'm kind of sketching this out kind of quickly, but I mean, I don't know if it's something where there could be some sort of blossoms as well. Other thing I would look at is uh, over the garden wall. They have all these great little uh, uh, interstitial images of trees and tree branches. Um, they just have really great detail on the leaves. You know, I don't know if this is meant to be kind of more of an autumnal setting or more of a summertime setting, but you know, take time on, the, on those those trees. Take time on uh, thinking about how the details are going to work in, in this additional foreground areas. So normally, you don't just go from the trees straight into the ground, and you want to think of, of 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 kind of the foliage down here in masses. So if I'm going to figure out foliage, I'm going to kind of figure out okay, we've got kind of a mass here a, f a foliage and, and maybe another little one here and kind of play with the shapes that can kind of interlock and you know first you kind of designate in a really um, general way where that foliage is going to be and you know once you've kind of designated that I'm going to put this on a different layer so we can so we can play with it a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of lighten that now, but I kind of have that as a guide. And I'm gonna come back in and I can, I can design, I can look at some reference and kind of find some, you know, leaf shapes. Let's pretend there's like, like a burdock plant here that has some big, big leaf shapes. By the way, you want to know what, what I spent my summers doing as a, as a kind of preteen. It was pulling up burdock plants from the ground on my, my grandparents' ranch. That's how I know what a burdock plant is. Um, you know, you can have grasses here. Little flowers and things sticking out. You had kind of these plants thing of the jig, something like this. You know, make that detail really rich. I'm just gonna kind of scribble in some things here, but the idea is that you want to have just that texture and the detail. You can have these leaves and plants kind of climbing up the, the tree trunk. Maybe it's English ivy coming up here, you know. And it just gives it this really, you can give it this rich sense of of texture and environment so it's it's not just this this fox walking along some barren patch you feel like it's this this fox kind of navigating through this dense dense foliage you can indicate that and you know it's important to know it, it no it can be really detailed but because you're keeping um you know look at some reference for bark do some beautiful bark because you are keeping the values you're keeping the values all unified this detail isn't going to stand out over the story that you're trying to tell. And you can even go into this area over here that's a little bit lighter. And you can kind of define the foliage a little bit more, add more detail here as well. 
So that's kind of a thought on detail there. Let's talk about this frame now, which I think is a really interesting device to use to have this kind of frame. One thing I'm going to try to give us a little bit more room here. Let's flatten that. But let's think about the same thing as, as, we, do, as we do this framing. You really want to show some love when it comes to this framing. And this is going to be more challenging if you are doing this image in traditional media. Now, it should be a little bit of a darker line. Because kind of these details like this require some precision. And I found kind of the best way to get that precision is through let's turn that off. Is through kind of doing multiple passes. I mean, it, it helps to have some drafting devices. So if you have rulers, if you have some curved templates, that can really help. But these knots that you have going here, let's look at one of these knots. You know, I have some kind of interesting ideas sketched in. But go in. What I would recommend that you do is get some, some marker paper. If you have a light board, a light board would also work. But you're going to want to do some overlays. You're going to want to do s multiple passes over this to kind of get the shapes that you want. Like I can go in and look at the shape right now and see like, okay, there, I see there's this concept that's sketched in. Let's go in and make this, this concept a little bit more solid, give it a little bit more weight. So um, I need to go in with this, actually. Think about this as a three-dimensional object, too, this knot. So you have some, you have some let, me, let me show you one little nice little trick. You have a couple places here where you're ending forms with this which turns three-dimensional forms into like a two-dimensional line. Really simple trick to make it feel more three-dimensional is just to do what I'm doing here. where We've got the swirl, but then on the other side of the swirl, we continue it like this. So then it feels like a three-dimensional swirl kind of swirling in on itself. It doesn't feel like a, a linear, linear swirl. Um, and all I'm really doing is just trying to, I'm just trying to clean up this line work a little bit. Just define this this knot shape a little bit more, so it feels a little bit more solid. Like I said, you can do this with marker paper, and maybe what you do is you want to sketch out these shapes beforehand, or you could even use a light box. And then when you're ready for the finished one, you you come in and you, you know, if you're using a pencil or a brush or whatever it is, you come in and you you want to finish this shape. even do better than this. You know, maybe you make modifications and you figure things out as you go as well. So I'm, for example, I'm going to just for the time being, rather than having this follow its, its form, I'm going to have it come down this way. Connect with this shape here. And we will take, and you can even do this multiple times. You can get some marker paper and do an overlay and then do another overlay. Let's see. Now let's bring, I'm gonna bring this loop down this way. I'm kind of making some changes to the knot. Um, and as with the rest of, of the image you're looking at here, look up some reference. Look up some of those knot forms. Tons of stuff on the internet. No reason why you can't copy some of them directly to get ideas. Um, 
You know what? I'm going to add another little piece here, too. You know, you just want to spend some time and just put that love into it to make it a little, little more elegant. You can see here that I really haven't changed the design too much of your original shape. I've, I've changed it a little bit. Let's see, let's do, I'm just going to finish it like that. Yeah. Now it's a little too stubby. Let's give it a little bit more love. Like that. All right. Boink. And maybe that takes some trial and error to get it get it where you want it to go. Um, but also think about uh, areas of rest and areas of detail. We have this very detailed area right here. Let me get a brighter color here. We have a very detailed area here. Very twisty and turny. So you don't need to get quite so detailed as you move across this way. You can, you can have an area of rest. Let's go from detail to rest. So rather than there's a lot of little squiggles here, let's just have a shape that kind of follows the curve of the top of this arch. I'm just modify it a little bit. And again, rather than having a two-dimensional shape, let's just do the simple little trick to make it a three-dimensional shape. And if you want to use curve templates and things like that, that's fine. I'm, I could be a little bit neater with these. Looking a little bit Play-Doh-y right now as I'm trying to draw them. But this is also something that I could take, I could take a second pass on, clean this up a little bit, tighten it up a little bit. Um, and you know, let's try doing this. Copy and paste this. The horizontal. There you go. Uh, another thing to consider when you're doing traditional media is, you know, think about doing going back and forth between traditional and uh, and digital. Uh, a lot of the ink work that I do, I start digitally. Um, move things around, shift things around, and then I print it out and I, I, you know, finish it traditionally. So that's totally something you could do too, that you could do some sort of mirroring like I've done here. You can also mirror, again, by using a light table, right? And if you've already designed the shape beforehand, you put it under a light table, you trace it once on this left-hand side, then you flip it around to mirror it, and you trace it on the other side. So you do have other options uh, other than digital when it comes to that. So those are kind of my thoughts on this image. I think it's a really fun image. I love, I love the storytelling um, that's going on here. You know, I think there are other things we could have talked about um, when it gets into, um, you know, perhaps uh, rendering and uh, construction and kind of just building more, more solid figures and things like that. Um, that's certainly something we, we could have addressed. Uh, but I felt like because this was so compositional, I wanted to kind of take a compositional approach. So this is kind of the original. These, these are kind of the recommendations I made for another pass on the image. Um, but anyway, I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, let me know what you guys think. I mean, this is, this is the first time, so we're kind of trying this out, having fun. Emily, uh, let me know what you think on the image. Did I totally murder your image by doing this? I'd love to see you take another stab at it and, uh, you know, do another another image trying to kind of follow some of this stuff. Uh, but, you know, I think that's probably uh, good for today. So, like I said, if anyone else is interested in, in getting a critique, getting a direct uh, feedback from me, you can send your image to feedback at brandondayton.com. Uh, and like I said, I won't be able to get to all of them, but, uh, you know, certainly some of them I will take a look at. So if you have any questions, any comments about any of th the things I've discussed today, in this critique, please leave them in the comments below. Um, please uh, like this video, please subscribe if you'd like to see more things like this, and we'll talk to you next time.